Welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In this video, I interview Bill and Debbie, who have both experienced Bigfoot activity. They were kind enough to tell their Sasquatch encounters, and I think it will really give the viewers a better idea of the area I have been researching in. I feel it is important to document each encounter because there always seems to be a hidden clue with each story told. From the moment I arrive at Bill's, I normally hear Sasquatch making noise in the woods. Each clan can vary from one another, and sometimes you get lucky and come across a group that is willing to communicate in an aggressive manner. You can almost sense their presence when they are around. Bill has mentioned to me that he wants to be friends with the Sasquatch and is willing to do what it takes to learn more about them. After doing research at the area, we all met a good friend who insisted we should run audio out in the forest. He claimed trail cameras will scare them away and that audio was the way to go. To our amazement, we were able to document Bigfoot vocalizations and you can hear them walking around in the woods at night. We have learned a lot already and we continue to improve our methods each time we all meet up at Bill's place. In the description below, you will find links to my SoundCloud page and I have posted a lot of strange audio captured from this area. If you have a Bigfoot encounter you would like to share, please contact me at sasquatchtheory at outlook.com. If you enjoy listening to Cryptid Encounters, then like and subscribe. Also, if you would like to gain access to the full videos and behind the scenes action, then you can become a Sasquatch Theory member today. All right, let's dive into Bill and Debbie's encounters from the Mark Twain National Forest. If you would, just take it away. Where did all this begin? Okay, well, it started with, uh, you know, I had already uh, seen big, a couple of Bigfoots, and I'd tell my wife about this, my wife Debbie. And I tell my wife about it, and so, you know, she believed me, but she wanted to, to of course, see one herself. You know, that you know, everybody does, even though it's very difficult to, uh, to see one. But anyway, I took her out to a place uh, that I'd been researching where I've had uh, lots of experiences at. And uh, this experience was, was, was no different. We went out there and we set up. We were, we were going to stay for three nights uh, because... Uh, it's been my experience out there that if nothing happens the first night, second night, you're, you're probably going to have, have something to approach your, approach your camp. So the first night was uneventful. We heard, uh, we heard a few howls and a few calls back off in the distance, but nothing, uh, nothing up close. It, we don't know if anything approached the camp or not. We don't think they did. If they did, we slept through it. We didn't uh, hear anything. But the second night, the second night was... Uh, it was altogether different. Uh, we were there by ourselves because if you want to have an experience, do not go with a group of people. Go with just one person, maybe two. So it was just my wife and I and our little dog, which might have had something to do with bringing them in. I don't know. It's a little shit zoo. It would have been just a snack. It would have been just a snack for these <laughs> Bigfoots. But anyway, uh, we were laying in the tent, and we were dozing off and on, and I heard them coming maybe 200 yards away, 150 yards away, I could hear, hear something sound like talking off in the distance and I could tell it was getting closer and closer. So I nudged my wife and uh, I, I told her, I said, wake up. I said, I think we got, we have some coming up close. And uh, about that time, uh, I, I could tell that they were real close and they came up over the road and they stopped on the other side of the, the drive into this, it's just one campsite. It's uh, very isolated. It's a, uh, what do they call it when you just have one fire ring? Primitive. It's very primitive, just a fire ring there. No running water, no electric, nothing like that. And out in the middle of the woods, it gets very spooky out there. But anyway, uh, they came up there and stopped and just went silent and then started talking well they they were going like 
It was like jibber jabber to me is what it seems like, you know. It was kind of scary. Well, the first time was the house. It was very in the distance, but I could hear it and it kind of scared me a lot. So I was like, I can't believe I'm hearing this. And uh, then it stopped and we were just talking about it. And then uh, I think I dozed off again. You did, you and dozed off. Then you woke me up again. And that's when it was really freaky. It was like jibber jabber, like they were talking to each other. And it was really scary. And he wanted to go outside and make a call and I wouldn't let him because I was like, I'm thinking they're gonna come up there. And even though I'd like to see one, I don't wanna, you know, be out there by myself. <laughs> and and so they were close. Like, they were close, yeah. They were very close. They were only 20. It was close. 20 yards yeah. from the tent. Yeah. Uh, on the other side of the dirt uh, driver there. We were right next, we were camped right next to the road. We were camped at, it's very, Cramp. There's not much space. You you sit your tent up right next to the to the drive, yeah. just a couple of feet off the off the dirt road, and then the fire rings over here, and you know you separate if you want to, but you wherever you sit up at, you're going to be close to the road. To the road, and so that's what they came up there and they started going. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. It was just jibber jabber. Yeah, I think people call it samurai chatter. Is what they is what they call it. I think. And did it sound like it was the little ones? No, I think I could hear three adults is what it seemed to me uh and uh, and i told everybody i said i think it's three coming coming this way because you can hear them talking coming through the woods i mean they were they didn't they were just talking they were very comfortable yep in in the in the surrounding and, and i don't think they expected to see anybody where we were at because they were coming up down in a gully uh, through the woods and they have to walk up a hill and then here's the top of the road and that's when they seen us right there. So they were kind of, you know, taken back to see a tent sitting there. And that's when they stopped and they stood there for a few seconds. Then it's already going back and forth again. And then suddenly one of them started doing these very loud hoot owl calls right at the tent. Yep. And he did six calls right after the other one uh, really loud and my wife's going i can't take it i'm going to start screaming <laughs> yeah i'm going to start I was screaming very, very excited and it's very scared because i didn't know what it was even though i did know what it was but they were close and i never heard that i've always just heard him talk about it so it was a great experience but very very frightening i was ready to go home <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and he kept saying he was going to go out there, and I kept going, no, 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 you're not going outside. And, and so. you know, I had to convince her. I, I told her, I said, they're not going to hurt us. They're not here to hurt us. I said, I think they just got surprised when they walked up on the tent, uh, which was also kind of surprising in itself because you usually don't fool these animals, you, you know. But they were just comfortable out for a night walk, whatever they were doing, I don't know, but they were just at ease. And when they walked up that little hill up to the top there, just boom, you know, like, oh my God, there's somebody sitting here. And you yep. know, we didn't know. And uh, so that that was that experience. And I don't think you slept for the rest of the night. Then yeah. I don't know what time of the night that was, but it was early morning. Yeah. If I had to guess, but 1231. Something like that. Yeah. Because it was, it was just after we fell asleep. So. Yeah. And I was just kind of watching my phone while I was out there. And I fell asleep. Well, like I said, I don't think they knew we were there. They, I, I was laying in the tent, and I always sleep with one ear open when I'm out there. I mean, I don't sleep well because you, you just don't know. I mean, I've had a lot of uh, experiences out there in another place uh, where we were at. But uh, so I heard them coming through the woods at, at a distance. I don't know how far. I'm just guessing 150 yards maybe. I heard them talking as they were coming through the woods. So they were just walking along for you know, whatever uh, they were doing. And but they were obviously at ease, just talking, didn't, I don't guess they uh, thought anyone was in earshot or hearing distance uh, of them coming up. So she was awake and ready when they come up, come up. Yeah. Cause I, I knew which way they were coming. I'm thinking to myself, well, they're gonna have to walk up that trail up to the, if they come that way, they're gonna have to walk up that trail up to the top of the road. And that's just exactly what they did. 
And uh, so, you know, once I started talking and then they started doing the hoot owls and things, then it just stopped. Yeah, it was quiet, real quiet. And you didn't hear them walk off. You didn't hear them do anything. And so we laid there until, uh, until daylight hit. And then that was the experience we were looking for. Yeah. So uh, she didn't want to stay another night. Yeah, I was, I was kind of scared, you know, because I, I wanted to hear them. And I wanted to be able to tell people, yeah, I heard it. And that's what they are because it couldn't have been anything else. It just couldn't have been. And yeah. now I can tell people, yeah, I heard that. And if you want to experience it, you have to go out and you have to lay there and listen. Or, you know, you might miss it. But if you don't go out to the woods and camp or just go out there and wait for this to happen, you're never going to hear it. So, no, you, yeah. you know, people always say, well, why didn't you get a picture? Why didn't you do this? They always want to have their own experience sitting on their couch. Yeah. Well, that's cool. You know, I would love to give them an experience sitting on their couch. But they're very difficult to get a picture of them. I mean, they're very, they're very elusive. They can see IR, so the field cameras don't work very well on them. Uh, you might get lucky and catch one out past the uh, the IR trigger uh, where it reaches out there, IR trigger light. If they're out past that, they'll walk in front of the camera, but they're going to be out of ways. But if you're lucky enough and something triggers the camera, you know, while they're walking out through the field or something, you might get a picture like that. I know a friend of ours had several pictures like that. But uh, that's, uh, that's how she had her experience, and that's how I've had all my experiences. I've had quite a few experiences out there, but I've been by myself each and every time, except for this one, except this time here, it was just her and I. And I, I've had some hair-raising experiences out there I could, I could share with you. Uh, just a real quick one, I always say Bigfoot owes me a car wash. And it was kind of, sounds kind of funny with Bigfoot owning your car wash, but uh, a lot of us was out one night, and this goes against everything I believe. There was a group of us out there, we were sitting by the fire. And my pickup was parked in the parking lot. And uh, suddenly this one lady that was with us, she goes, Bill, who's that tall guy standing beside your truck? And I'm like, there's no tall guy standing beside my truck. But I couldn't see because the tent was in the way. She goes, yeah, there's a tall guy standing right behind your truck. And so everybody thought Bigfoot. So everybody jumped up, spun around. And of course, he takes off from all the commotion. But uh, we went out there, looked beside the truck, and right beside the back wheel was a puddle of water, of liquid. And you could see the tire was wet. And so there he has it, and I believe this is what happened. He crawled up there on all fours, and he peed on my tire, <laughs> and then stood up and was looking at us, and then we said, he took off. So, indeed, Bigfoot owes me a, a doggone car wash because he pissed all over my back tire. <laughs> yeah. and, and we know it was pee because one of the girls there, God bless her, she stuck her hand in it and smelled of it, and, you know, we are so stupid. We all, we all took a smell. And sure enough, it was urine. And, it, and I asked the guys out there, there was, there was about six of us out there, which was surprising that this Bigfoot came up. He must have been a young one or something, I don't know. But he did come up and did do that. But I asked each one, I said, did any of you guys, I, mean, I know you wouldn't do that, but did you urinate? Did anybody urinate on my car tire, my truck tire? When it was a big puddle too, and everybody said, no, they didn't do it. So yeah, Bigfoot owes me a car worse peeing on my truck tire. <laughs> I'm sure I'll never collect. But I can always go back out there and try to, you know, have another experience that way. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yeah. So the encounter or the experience you guys had while camping, did that bring you guys closer together? Uh, I, I, I kind of think it did because of the Bigfoot stuff. You know, I would go out there and get run off. I'd come home about 2 o'clock in the morning until I just got run off from the campsite. And she'd look at me like, Yeah. how does that happen? <laughs> you I know, mean, I well, always believed him. I just wanted to experience for myself. And now I have, so yeah, when he does tell me the stories now, when he's out by himself, then yeah, then I can relate to it better. So I would, we did see something on our road down here, and mm -hmm. I could swear it was just the back of a Bigfoot, and it was like his hind leg and quarter. And we were both, we were driving back from his surgery, and I was, I was like, what's that? And then it just went away. So now I would believe it was the back of a Bigfoot versus anything else I would have thought it was in the past. Yeah, the, the back so, leg yeah. was the back leg it was, was just big. You, and brown, humongous brown hair is about two inches, yeah, two inches long. I mean, pretty good looking uh, hair. I mean, nice and full and thick, but that back leg was just 
humongous. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was. But in order to believe it, like, you know, yeah. you can, your husband can tell you about it, your wife, any, your kids, but in order to believe it, you have to go out and experience yourself. Yeah. Because it makes it more, I don't know what. Well, it's, it's life changing. Yeah, it's, it's life changing, yeah. It's, it's life changing yeah. because, you know, these animals, they're biological animals, you know, whatever you want to say about them, I don't know. They're, they're, they're very intelligent, uh, very smart. I mean, they have survival skills over us in spades. We don't have a, we don't have a prayer as far as survival yeah. skill goes up against these animals. I even hate to call them animals because they have their own language that they do understand when they talk to each other. And, uh, it sure sounded like it that night. They were talking back and forth. So it sure, I mean, to me, it was a different kind of language, but it was back and forth. And that's what scared me. I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? And they were loud too. I mean, really loud. So. It sounded like a complex language. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Something that you, a, a different language like Chinese or yeah, they, Mexican or, you know, just different, different kinds of speeches. Yeah, they weren't talking like baby talk, goo goo no, gaga. No. I mean, no, there was no uh, question that uh, it was they were they were exchanging information. Yeah, uh, back and forth uh, that night, and you know, every, anybody who's in the Bigfoot community knows you know about these Sierra sounds. I mean, you've you've heard them, you've heard about that, and I had a chance to hear those sounds. I think you might be able to go online and get find them, maybe the Sierra sounds. I mean, any fool who hears that uh, has to be able to know. Uh, that's a language. That's yeah. a language, man. I mean, they're talking back and forth, exchanging ideas and and uh, making plans on whatever you know they do, whatever they're going to. I don't know, but you know, I, I want to find a way to coexist with them because they're not going anywhere, buddy. I'm gonna tell you right now, they're not going to go anywhere. They're they're out here in the woods to stay. Well, they're forced to be out here. I mean, you're not going to see them in this any of them in the city or in towns running around. I don't think. You know, I'm pretty sure, but maybe on the edges. Maybe yeah. on the edges. <laughs> All right. So, before you and Debbie went out there and camped, what happened? What What did you come back and explain to her? What was your experience down there at this area? Well, I've, my goodness, I've had a lot of them uh, out there. Uh, but it's not the first time they've approached your tent, right? No, no, no. I've. They have sent me home twice out there but you're by yourself man i mean it's easy to get scared i take pride on on how how brave i think i am but it might be just stupidity i don't know but uh the first night out there i got i got ran off uh one came up to my tent i'm by myself in a two in a two-man tent i i had the rain fly off of it so you can see in the tent very well you know very well i wasn't i thought i was gonna go out there and just have a good night rest come home and say there's nothing out here, uh, but that's not what happened. So uh, I was hearing a lot of owls uh, that night, a lot of owl, hoot owls. I mean, I'm going like, dang. Uh, with, I mean, there must have been 20 owls I was listening to, which in the back of my mind, I'm thinking that doesn't seem right because I don't, are they territorial? I, are, they, are they that sharing? I don't, I don't know, but... I suddenly heard one that was kept just going hoot owls over and over and over again. I counted 52, 52 times when I started counting, which wasn't right away. So I don't know how many times exactly, but I counted 52 times and then it stopped. And right when it stopped, just a few seconds later, there was a big, it was a, <laughs> it was like that, right about 15 yards from my tent. and. I, sp I sit up and spun around and I'm looking uh, right at the edge of the tree line. I could see a real dark spot, a real dark spot that was darker than the other. I'm thinking, my God, he's standing right there and he wants me to leave. Well, I wanted him to leave and I done something I wished I hadn't have done, but I did. I had a 45 with me and I looked at him and I pointed at his head and I raised it up about 20 foot over his head. And I popped off five rounds. And I mean, fire flew out of that 45 and it rang. It just echoed through there. And by the time I could see where he was at, he was, he was, he left, he was gone. But when I did that, I thought the woods would go quiet, which normally that's what happens. You know, everything stops, everything's go silent. 
but uh, it got so loud to the point it was almost deafening. There were yells, there was rock clacking, there was tree knocking, there were hoot owls, screams from all of, from a 360 degree all the way around the tent out in the woods and my first thought of that was my god they think i just shot one of their own one of their family members so i'm thinking please get back to wherever it is you're going and let them know i didn't shoot you i was just you know and so i sat in my tent with my 45 up like this until the sun came up. And as soon as that sun rose where I could see enough outside, I got up, I pulled my tent up from the stakes. I didn't bother folding it. I threw it in the back of the truck and I left. And I swear I'd never go back again, uh, but I, I can't stay away now. You know, now I stay here at the house more than I go camping because we have lots of activity here at the house. but. Uh, since then, I've been back out there, and there was one particular night, me and another guy was out there, and he was in his tent, I was in my tent, and he had hearing aids, but at night he charges his hearing aids so he can't hear. But this particular night, I woke up, and there was one outside my tent growling, like a dog. It was a real deep, deep guttural growl, and it went on for about, not a long time, but it seemed like a long time because I was in my tent, scared, petrified, uh, maybe six or seven minutes he just sat there and growled and then there was another one behind his tent uh, huffing and puffing like that one did to me in the same area because he was camped in the same spot that I was camped at when I had that experience uh, previous months and uh, I know you can think I'm lying to you but I'm just going to tell you what happened at the same time this one's growling beside my tent that was huffing and puffing by his tent there's three or four of them up the gravel road and they were talking and it was it sounded like they were telling jokes i mean they were da -da 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 -da, and then they would then they would start kind of laughing and it would build up to a to a heavy loud laugh and then it would stop and then you'd hear one of them da -da 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 -da, and then they would build up to another high laugh and um, so i thought maybe at the top of their laughter when they're laughing really loud when they're getting really loud i can yell at my buddy over here and maybe wake him up so i did that and the first time they, they did, didn't seem to hear me, he didn't hear me either. And so I waited again, and this one stopped growling right after I yelled the first. He stopped growling. But these two are still up, these three or four are still up the road doing whatever the heck it is they're doing up there. And uh, I waited for the laughter to reach the apex, so they got really loud, and I yelled again. I yelled his name again. And uh, this time they heard me. Everything stopped. Everything stopped, and that was it for that night. That was it for that night. But uh, even with him out there, we had uh, actually that same that same evening before we laid down. We had one come up just across the woods, uh, do this crazy yell, just a long yell. Um, well, kind of like it sound like a dog getting tore apart sound but there wasn't no dog over there it was just a bigfoot doing with their vocal they have a they have extraordinary vocal boxes that are a lot far more uh, advanced than ours than our vocal sounds are we can make uh, and so we both heard that that was cool you know that was cool you're there with your friend and you know having experiences and that was nice he didn't get to share that that night experience because he slept through everything he slept through all of it as he had his hearing aids out and they were charging. So he didn't hear, he didn't get to hear any of that, uh, that action there that night. But uh, those are some of the experiences that, I, that I've had at the same, same uh, two campsites, same two campsites out there that I've had. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it is. Pretty crazy, the world we live in is just nuts, man. And yeah. shortly after that, you started experiencing activity here at the house. Here at the house. Uh, I've seen them here in the yard. Uh, well, I've seen four of them, maybe one twice. Maybe I've just seen three, but I'm not sure if that one was the same one. But one night a mother came up here and uh, sat back over the yard here under a tree back there with two young ones. Me and another guy was here, so it wasn't me by myself. 
And um, they stayed over there about 35, 45 minutes. He thinks it was about an hour. I, I don't know. It was a long time. And they didn't leave. They just sat over there. And the mother was just looking off to the uh, southwest. And she wasn't even concerned with the two young ones. The two young ones came up out of the woods to the edge of the woods and were just staring at us like they had never seen anything, which they probably haven't. You know, but the two young ones just stared at us with these big yellowish green eyes. They'll be, from a campfire, they will be yellowish green eyes when you see a Bigfoot eyes from a campfire, they'll be yellowish green. They were huge. Uh, with car lights, some car lights, they're red, like a tail light. You can see them, it looks just like a doggone old uh, round tail light. Uh, I've seen one out here with the flashlight I had, different flashlight, and those eyes looked like they were transparent. Translucent, like you can almost see through them uh, that night. So that night you came out here with a flashlight. What, what time was it, like 2 o'clock? It was about 1, 3, 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I have a little Shih Tzu, a little Zoe. My little Zoe, she's not with us anymore, but she was my little dog. And she was acting really weird. Uh, so I thought she had to go outside, but she did have to go outside. She just smelt something that we didn't smell. So she was like alerted to something. She was acting, well, she was in the doorway just barking in the doorway, just barking at night, and we're up. so I'm thinking maybe she had to go outside. So I came to the front door first to open the door, and she's not moving. She's still sitting in the doorway, bedroom doorway, just barking, and she won't come out. So I said, well, all right, well, then you ain't gonna go to pee. Stop your barking, go back to bed. I went laid back down, she started barking again. So I said, well, this time I'm gonna pick her up, take her outside, which I'm sure she was terrified when I did that, because she didn't want to come outside. She was just telling me, Dad, something's out there that I don't think you can protect me from. And you're taking me out there. <laughs> you're hauling me out there. But I took her out here, we're out here on the front uh, patio right there, and I had a flashlight, and I always scan the wood line looking for coyotes because we have coyotes out here. I've shot one right here in the front yard. And so I'm scanning this wood line right here behind us, and I get to right over here, and boom, there's a Sasquatch sitting right under the tree just looking. She, and she was looking right at the flashlight, I must have blinded her because, I mean, it was a head-on flashlight look. And her eyes were huge. Uh, but you could almost like you could see through them almost. And she just turned her head sideways and just disappeared, right? Boom. I mean, as soon as she stood up, you couldn't see her anymore. Because it was like she just faded into the darkness and just walked away. And, you, and that morning I got up and walked out. You could see a trail through the leaves. You can see a little trail now through the leaves, just barely, but... Uh, it was a lot more prevalent last fall. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and I'm guessing she just sat out there. I think I went told you these viewers before about this story. <clears throat> I'm guessing she just sits out there and just watches the house, like her own little TV. Yeah, and with the recordings that we've listened to, it sounds like they're out there, you know, right at the edge of the world. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we Well, you you put some recordings on your uh, channel, right? Yeah, yeah. The first time I met up with you, the Sasquatch came. And oh, that's right. That night you were here. They, he, uh, I guess he picked that tree up and uh, dropped it back down. I mean, that's how strong these animals are. But that was loud that night because we were, how far is that? That's 100 yards to where he uh, did that with the tree, and we all heard it. Yeah. The theory is that Steve cutting down the trees and shooting some tannerite and us doing calls, having the fire going, brought him in. That's, that's the theory. That's Steve's theory. Uh, I'm thinking maybe the chainsaw might have helped some. I don't know how much explosives has to do with bringing them in. But, yeah. hey, who knows? They were here that night. And we did run the chainsaw, and we did blow up some tannerite, having some, having some big guy fun, and it, it, it they did come over uh, that night. But yeah, so yeah. Yeah, what are the chances? You know, the first time we meet, we had big guy. That was the very first night you were out here, and I was hoping some. You know, and what's funny is I know they're out here, and uh, I know they do stuff out here, but every time they show up, I'm always surprised. I just feel surprised uh, when they do. Uh, make an appearance. Uh, sometimes they'll be hidden over there at night and you'll never even know they're there and they'll yell to just 
say here I am you know you ha ha you can't see me or I don't know what they think when they think and when they do that but they've done that a couple of times to us out here uh, they'll be right over there in the corner of the yard off in the woods just you'll never know they're there you never hear them and then suddenly they'll just do a do a yell or a call and well, how long has he been sitting there you don't know yeah. you don't yeah. know when I first talked to you you know I asked you did they follow you from that conservation area to here but you said no I don't think they do Right down the road. Has a family history uh, Slocum, I'll say the name because there's a book, Slocum, a uh, holler out there. And he is, if, if you throw a rock, it's probably about a quarter mile away through the woods. If you drive, it's about a mile. And uh, they've spa, they've had activity out here since 1946. They, uh, they can date it back uh, to then. Yeah. So we know since the 40s yeah. they've been out here. And they say that was before the deer population was introduced out here, I guess, because I never knew that, but I mentioned it one day. And was it you that mentioned there weren't deers out here at that time? Uh, but they were here living on, I don't know, hogs? Yeah. I know we have hogs out here, hogs and uh, wild berries. We've got some wild berries right here. So basically it was a, a big farm back there and yep. the guy was a piano tuner. Guy was his dad was a piano tuner, and they were having all kinds of activity. And they were having a lot of activity on their yard, uh, in their farm. Of course, Bill says it's just a. It wasn't really a farm. It was just, you know, a bunch of woods. Isn't that cool? Check that out, guys. <laughs> you got a mama dragging a juvenile across the two track. Heck yeah. But what I'm doing right here is I'm setting up this new zoom audio recorder i think it's like the h yeah the h6 and i built this tube for it and i just put in the battery bank i don't know if this is going to work but i'm willing to try it out so we'll see what happens guys all right i almost got this thing set up see there's the battery bank there's the recorder. Make sure that thing's nice and tight. But yeah, it should hang pretty good in the tree. And that microphone system is really beefy. I'm really digging that, guys. Isn't that cool? And then we'll put the windscreen on it, windshield, whatever you want to call it. She is complete, guys. We're totally going to be catching Sasquatch with this thing. I mean, I'm pretty confident it'll run for about 60 to 70 hours probably. And then with the solar panel plugged up into it, I'm thinking it'll run for like three months, guys. But the problem is I don't want one giant file. I'm not sure how my computer will handle that. So it's going to be temporary. But yeah, let's get this thing out there, hang it up in a tree leave it for a few days and see how it holds up. I'm pretty confident it'll work. And it kind of looks like, I don't know, like a little Frankenstein recorder. Call this recorder Frank. That moon looks really cool. Ooh, that's a creepy shot, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Last night it was like somebody turned like a light bulb on in yeah, the woods. It was bright. Yeah, it was real bright. My new creation. <laughs> I think like 60 or 70 hours. Really? Yeah. But with that solar panel, it'll go nonstop. Because yeah. the solar panel has built-in batteries, lithium ion batteries, and they charge up, and then they'll charge up that battery bank in there. I mean, 60, 70 hours, we could just clear to put a timer on it somehow. Yeah, I know. Come on, Zoom. Zoom needs to figure it out. Put a self-timer on there. Yeah. I think that'd be a good idea. I've been hearing weird stuff since I got here, Bill. Because you're in a weird part of the... Dude, I'm telling you, stuff happens out here, man. 
I know. The moment I got here though, Yeah, I think a lot of Americans have had paranormal activity, but not as many have experienced Bigfoot activity. I feel like that's a little more rare. Everybody experiences paranormal, at least. about paranormal activity being more prevalent than Bigfoot sightings? <sighs> what do you think? Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of haunted houses out there and stuff, like in town and stuff. And dude, a lot of Victorian houses, graveyards, cemeteries. Oh, that's one thing, Bill. I've noticed there is a connection with cemeteries and bigfoot yeah, activity and um mines like caves and mines you might have some i think males will if they want to go look for like yeah. uh, you know their love or you know mate oh did you see that what did you star uh well, i saw i saw a streak but i thought it was a fire it was right there yeah. yeah son of a gun blue one. make a wish Hope the Bigfoot come out. That's the second one I've seen out here. Yeah, I saw one that one day I was here, and the night before that, when I stepped out on the porch, I saw a shooting star. Because I was telling you about the ones I saw, and that one weird one, you're like, that's not a shooting star. <laughs> the one that came from the ground up. I'm telling you, it was weird. I looked it up, and yeah, it wasn't normal. I heard like some type of chatter. It's hard to tell because all those dogs are going off everywhere. Wasn't that one over there weird? Yeah. That was weird. And I told you it sounded like a dog was getting torn apart over there. Yep, they do that, man. I've told you that. Uh, you, you've experienced that? I remember you saying something about that. I've experienced several times. Yeah. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. But I thought, that's why I asked when I came inside of your guys' house, I was like, are your dogs in there? Because whatever was up on that hill sounded like it was getting torn apart. Like yeah. something was getting it. That's what they do. I Man, it sounds terrible, didn't it? Yeah, and then we walked up there five minutes later and he's boo, boo, barking at us, like directing it towards us. But it sounded like a dog that time. It, when he first started, it didn't. But then yeah. he corrected himself. <laughs> yeah. Once we were looking at him. But I mean, if he was there during the day, they gotta be right around us right now. Mm -hmm. Little boogers. Well, that thought that Dev Ark had, it certainly wasn't the one getting ripped apart. Yeah. He wouldn't be up here doing that, he'd be dead. Well, I, th I almost went up there, I thought about it, like to see what the heck was going on, but it's like he was trying to lure me out there. I, w I mean, somebody that didn't know what Bigfoot was, they would have went out there to see what was going on. Yeah. I mean, I walked, I've heard there was a cemetery a couple of times. I walked up there, mm -hmm. nothing. Heard it across the cemetery, I've heard it straight, directly right across the road. And that was a little patch of wood before that house down uh, there in the hollow. And I heard it back here in the woods. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's awful. But it ain't nobody getting hurt. It's just something they do. Oh. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try out what I think is gonna work. Because they're the, like the guardians of the forest. I think when an animal's in distress, they're gonna come check it out.